Look at this one. Hi, baby. Hi. Look at that one. That's the one we're sleeping in. Oh, it keeps going. It just keeps going. If you have kids, you come through this hallway. We got this room. I don't understand this setup. Who's sleeping in the king size bed next to their... I don't know. It's the cuck bed. I, I, I don't know. I like it. That's got a bathroom. We got another bedroom. Then we've got this kitchen. Look at this kitchen. Now, there's a downside to this place. When I was growing up, it was a funeral home. <laughs> so the morgue's downstairs. This is a viewing room. At least I'm not sleeping in the morgue. But when I tell you that this town is full of ghosts from my past, I mean it literally. Now, the reason I came here was to explore the town. It's late at night, but there's a place I want to go see. So everybody knows about the big fight I got into that was televised. Only other real fight I got into. Stood right here, going to this high school. I failed PE class. They made me take it over in 12th grade. So I'm in 10th grade PE. There's this one kid who's a smart ass to me every day. And he'd say things like, well, if you weren't so fat, we wouldn't have lost a softball game. And I'd say things like, well, if I wasn't up all night making love to your mother, I would have been able to score points, you know. I came to my car one day and he was standing here. His older brother, 18 years old, was standing there next to him. His older brother says, here's what's about to happen. You've been talking shit about my family. My little brother's gonna beat the hell out of him. If you hurt him, I'm gonna hurt you. So I stood right here, and my arms behind my back, and I said, do yours. And that scrawny little kid beat on me till he got bored doing it. Wow. Well, I forgot to take my glasses off. So they broke, and I remember him flying off. This black tar area here, there wasn't a, there was a house here, and there's a little bit of grass. And they landed in that grass, and I started crying. And he said, you're crying because you're beaten? I said, no, I'm crying because when I get home, I'm actually going to get my ass beat. My mom is going to do me in. And, you know, she was not too happy about the class. Because of that, but that's two beatings in one lifetime. At least with Jordy, I threw one punch. I'm getting better. Now, this house should have been the nicest house. I, I should have grew up in this house. We moved out of Castlewood, moved here. And this house is less than a block away from the school. I'd walk through my backyard past the pool every day to go to the high school. And we lived here a little while, a couple of years. My old country dog, the one that I got when I was born, he got hit by a car. He's still probably buried in that backyard unless they've dug him up. Good old bear. Bear. This house, though, was the, I think, the worst memory of my childhood. And I wanted to spend a little more time here when I was here with Jesse, but I'm glad I get to spend it now. But Me too. My uh, woke up one night, my dad worked late shifts in the coal mines. He was an electrician. He had his ass beat by the mines. He was mostly deaf. He broke his hands, broken his arms, miserable. And he started skipping work to just sat and drink in his truck. One night, about 1 a.m., there's somebody knock on the door and they've got my dad in a drunken stupor and they help him into the house. And they explained that dad had been sent in front of the country store just up the road and he'd been in his truck and he must have put it in drive or something and it rolled across the street and down the hill. And they knew that the cops picked him up. It'd be a hell of a lot of trouble. They went down there, got him instead and took him home. A week later, the night dad had off, he slept in the couch here in this front living room and I woke up to him screaming his lungs out. And he was laying on the couch with his hands in the air like he was reaching for angels or something. And my mom was sitting next to him with a wet washcloth, had him on his forehead. And I'm like, Mom, what's happening? And she goes, go to bed, Steve. It's no big deal. I said, Mom, you need to dial 911. That man's dying. And that's how I remember saying it. I was 12. <laughs> but she said no. She was embarrassed. She didn't want the town to know that he was going through whatever he was going through. Well, I called 911. And the ambulance showed up. 30 minutes later, it takes a while in a town like this. And they took him off. And he went out to Salem to be re rehabilitated. And mom told me it was an alcoholic seizure. I don't know what that is. I've tried to look it up. And my understanding of what it's supposed to be is that he, his brain was so starved of nutrients, it was basically living off of just the alcohol. And the man was down to 96 pounds. He had not eaten food and I can't tell you how long. His brain had basically a stroke. I believe it was just a regular stroke brought on by all that stuff. My brother has often asked the question whether or not mom had poisoned him. He was missing work. He wasn't holding his end of the bargain up. And 
I wouldn't put it past mom. Regardless, six months later, he came home to us and he couldn't talk anymore, could barely walk, could barely talk, could barely listen. He just sat in a chair and smoked. Couldn't watch TV, couldn't follow TV. And by then, we'd lost this house. We were trying to buy this place. And uh, I guess dad was making enough money to make it happen, but once dad wasn't working anymore, we couldn't. So we rented the place right here across the street. It's that little lit up one with the decorations. I remember there used to be a dad dogwood tree right out front, and I wish it still was. Beautiful. It was a nice little house. He came home to that, and uh, from that, this house to that house to the apartments that they've torn down to River Road and to finally South St. Paul. I've gone to that house once. I don't know if we're going back, but I'd give anything to be able to go into this house, walk through it. Yeah. If there was any moment that everything just took to turn for the worst, it was in this house. And while dad was gone, while dad was sick, my mom had never much more than spanked me a little bit or jerked me by the arm, but I got my first beating, just genuine beating in this house. She had asked me to change my bed clothes and my sheets, and it was the first time ever doing like that. I was like 10 or 11, I'd never done it before. And I was doing it wrong. She came in and just started wailing on me, screaming at me, and hitting me over and over and over again. And I remember pulling the blankets over me at first and then eventually getting the mattress of my little twin bed on top of me and her stomping on that mattress. Just having, I think I've heard it called a stomping party before and I think that's what it was. Just Well, I went into my first dissociative episode and that's where your brain kind of leaves your body and you just exist in autopilot. And I was there for, I don't know how long, I do know it was light when that happened and it was dark when she came and made me get up. Dad hadn't got sick. And a whole other ball game, I think, but it is what it is. As beautiful as this town is, though, it's crazy that dark stuff like that happens in it. I think, though, coming back here, I see this place for the beautiful little town it is. This town has changed a lot for the better, and uh, I'm really glad to be in it. I'm glad I was able to be here with you. I'm really glad you're here. I couldn't do this without you. I, don't, I couldn't do this without my best friend. God bless you, sweetheart. Let's see, baby. Let's go find something fun to do. Let's go. Let's go find something fun. All right, neither of us, neither of us is drinkers. This is, well, I am splurging a little bit. Look at that, Dr. Pecker. I had a Mountain Dew earlier, too. I'm in splurging today because we, we are processing our feelings, right? But we both got dark pass, right? Yes. So cheers for dark pass with brighter futures. Cheers. <laughs>